Welcome to Beyond Words Presents. Today we are here with Dr. Patricia, who is the author, the co-author of Fit Kids Revolution, which I have right here with me, as well as a just absolutely revol revolutionizing the world of childhood obesity and the fight against it. Dr. Patricia, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's exciting. I'm, I'm thrilled to talk about this topic. It's something that I, I have some personal experience with and then also just I know a lot of people are, are, are working on right now, including our First Lady. Um, and then also because this is a conversation that lots of people want to take part in, be sure to send in your questions through the Google Hangouts app and then be sure to, um, to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Um, my first question, Dr. Patricia, is why is this epidemic, why is this happening now? What is it that is causing this childhood obesity epidemic at this point in time? Gosh, that's a great question. Um, I think it's, it's a combination of things. I think it's uh, modern day society, <laughs> to be blunt. I mean, we've got uh, food companies making food and even trying to trick us by saying foods are healthy when they're not because they know now that we're trying to be more healthy. We've mm -hmm. got technology that really makes it so we don't have to go out and play and we don't and we and we don't have to move so much and uh, you know everything's so convenient people aren't walking places and we've just gotten into uh, you know a situation where it's you know we're, we're so based on our technology that we're not really kind of focusing on what's important so um, it, there's basic fixes and 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 you know there's solutions out there and um, you know that's what we're trying to get the word out. And that I'm so excited to be able to talk about that today because as anybody around here, anybody in the world could tell you, I mean we could list off a million different diets, many of which many of us have tried and have not worked. You know the Atkins South Beach diet, low carb, low, I don't know, dairy, all of that stuff. But it doesn't necessarily work. One of the things that I love that you say in your book is it's like it's not about any of that at all. No. What is it about? You know, it's about really getting a good, um, well, with, especially with children, from my perspective. But it, but adults can reflect on their childhood and kind of get that perspective. But really, getting a good relationship with food, and um, you know, it's harder and harder these days to even find food with good nutrition. And so we just try to keep basics in in my program. And so we just we reach for you know foods that were around when the caveman was here. It's very clear. You don't have to read a label. If it has a label on, it's probably not as healthy. So if we can fill our houses with those healthy foods, that's going to be our first step. And the second step is going to be just um, to let children self-regulate. Put a bunch of food in front of them on the table and let them decide if they're going to eat and how much. And those principles were set up by Ellen Satter and they're genius and I've kind of taken them and put them on steroids and taken them to the next level but she's really come up with this um, feeding relationship and that, that goes a long way on having a healthy relationship with food and so but what I find I see these kids and they've they've been diagnosed as being obese or overweight or with their or the parent was obese and they're worried their child's going to be obese or for whatever reason we've got parents um, in with good intentions micromanaging what the kids are eating you know, mm -hmm. and I could give you a hundred stories about how dysfunctional kids can get. I had one girl, and she had high cholesterol. She's 12 years old, and the doctor said not not so much cheese. And so mom was not letting her have cheese. Well, she was stuffing cheese up her sleeves. <laughs> you know, 12 year old girl, like you just go crazy with it. We had a three year old boy who was overweight, who was um, and who was sent to a dietitian, who was told he could only have carbs that would fit into this little cup a measuring cup and so he walked into my clinic and he had this measuring cup and I thought oh my gosh how cute he want does he want to be a chef and the mom says no ever since we we he could only have carbs that would fit into this cup he walks around with it he's basically feeling like he's starving he's food insecure and he's panhandling for his next ration of food and so okay. you can see how we you know we get all these notions that we're so concerned about obesity but how we can cause eating disorders and dysfunctional um, feeding with children if we're if we don't really understand those principles so we Absolutely. never do portion control you know okay. it's huge. that's crazy what I know everybody I know portion control no you you know what it's it's called intuitive eating you pay attention to your stomach you know how much you need to eat I have taken care of 10,000 kids with weight issues and I have never had a kid that came into my office with a stomach ache from too many Brussels sprouts or too many apples too many Cheetos yeah 
you know. <laughs> yeah. So I think that it, when you fill your house with healthy food, and then you let the kids self-regulate, they're gonna yeah. Some days we'll eat too much, and some days we'll eat too little. But actually, it's a great gauge. You know, I used to want to be a veterinarian, and I worked for years in animal hospitals, and uh, you know. If the dog didn't eat, it didn't feel good. So why force them? You know. And oftentimes we'll see kids in the same family, and one will be underweight, and the other one will be obese. And the underweight one, they're chasing around with a spoon around the dinner table, or putting chocolate in his milk, or you know, making a big fuss because he's not eating. And meanwhile, yeah. the obese one or overweight one is is saying, "Look, I'm being good. I'm eating." And so it's mm. a really um, important, no matter what size your child is that you, we have good table talk and that we don't focus on the portions. Let the child self-regulate. We, we nourish them emotionally at the table. We've put the food out. That's the nutrition. You, you've done your job as a parent. And at that point, then you just want to, you know, wow, you have such good manners. I like the way you put your napkin on the lap. While your teacher says you're doing a great job reading. I like the way you you were uh, had a great conversation with the lady at the bank. I was very proud about the way you handled yourself. You describe things, that compliments to your, your family. And oh, by the way, the cool thing about it is I've been doing this with my daughter. And she does those things back to me. And it feels good. <laughs> you know? So it's like a very, all of a sudden, the table, instead of being a battle, ground or a place where parents are worried to come to where it actually gets to be a great base camp for the whole family to kind of refuel and to feel loved and so that's what we, it's about I'm, I'm curious because one of the things that every single parent tells their kid is you have to clean your plate like you have to finish everything and I guess no. I have it in my head that when I was a kid my parents used to say that to me and so that's why I overeat is because I'm trying to do what my parents taught me to do is that is that something that number one that parents should continue to do and number two I think I know the answer to that one and then number two is that it, how do how do I I know I'm not a kid but how do I untrain myself from that or am I even trained or is it just a story that's in my head well I think one thing that does help is if you um, you uh, well, there's a couple ways of doing it so number one if you're eating natural foods you're having lots of fruits and vegetables and grilled proteins and you're not having processed grains but 100% whole grains those foods are very filling mm -hmm. and so just and and so one thing is make sure that TV's off so you can pay attention to your cues of okay. your satiety and and then just just allow yourself you, just, you can leave some if you want it's okay you can have whatever you feel like you need and um, and so kids will say, is it okay? I didn't, you know, they'll come to my house and they're, they're used to their parents. I didn't finish this. or I was like, whatever your tummy says you need, you know. And, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what we need to do for ourselves as well. So, but the like, kiss of death is watching TV while you eat. Uh, we okay. got to turn that TV off because you're never going to be able to pay attention to your cues if you're focused on TV. Well, and, and you won't be able to love up your family. At that exactly. Time. It's like you, you miss out on that awesome time that well you've created with your family, and I, I yeah. hope my new husband and I will create with our family for sure. Yeah. Light a candle, enjoy that meal with your with your new husband, and set that up, tee it up so that it's going to be natural when you have children. Got it. Got it. Well, and another part of, of being healthy, of course, there's there's always two things that people talk about: diet and then exercise. In, in your perspective, how important is each one? They're both important. Mm -hmm. um, exercise is, you know, is so important to decrease stress, to help with concentration. Mm -hmm. School performance tends to be better. You sleep better if you exercise. You know, I recently, I was assembling some furniture and I was in these funky positions with these chairs. And <laughs> I kind of threw out my back and I couldn't do my regular exercising. And I just felt the stress going up in my life. So it's a yeah. really nice way to release stress. It's a healthy way to release stress is to exercise. Now, I'm not saying go on the treadmill and you have to do this or that or you have to run 10 miles or whatever it is. It's like whatever it is that brings you joy. If mm -hmm. you, you can go outside and garden. You can go for a walk. You can go for a hike. You can like mark something off your bucket list. Maybe do rock climbing or you know paddle boarding or swimming. What in Play tag, you know, especially if you have a family. Those are those are great things that simulate that fight or flight response, and those really normalize mm -hmm. your metabolism. Those quick things, the um, oh, I always say I'm wrong, uh, tabatas or whatever. But they're they're the exercises are usually about like four minutes, mm -hmm. or it'll you know be like. I don't know if we have it in the book. It, it's all described, but that you can go through these very 
the quick bursts of exercise and like and then short breaks and those types of exercise will go a long way on kind of rejuvenating your your brain your body and helping having your your body respond the right way to um, to food and it sounds like so much fun yes it should be fun and it and that's why it's like yeah, you don't you don't if you if you like tennis, go play tennis. If you don't, don't. <laughs> you know, it's like find what you love, find what brings you passion. When I was turned thirty, and I won't tell you how many years ago that was, but I gave myself ballet because I always felt so awkward as a kid, and my sisters could point their toes so perfectly, and I couldn't, and so I would never. I denied myself as a child, and so for my thirtieth birthday, I gave myself ballet, and I loved it. I loved ballet, and um, and so it's like. You know, find find your passion and and do that. And it and it doesn't have to always be that. It can switch to yoga. It can whatever it is that makes you feel good. Do it and fill your and fill your time with it instead of TV or watching Facebook and doing other things. So how do you and how do you do that for your kids? Because you, there's as as you mentioned many times. I mean, there's video games. There's television. There's Facebook. There's a million different things that would keep a kid very sedentary so how do you how do you help them find their passion and get so them outside or doing things yeah so from from you know a general perspective we try to limit TV game a video games um, computer to one hour day maximum and mm -hmm. children that watch uh, TV they're more likely to have trouble with school they're more likely to ha ha be violent they're more and um, there's all kinds of um, disadvantages uh, it can affect your sleep so um, you know turning off the TV and getting outside with your family and playing and you can make it fun you can, okay well let's go you know my family 4th of July we used to go and we all play tennis and then whoever lost had to do the dishes you know <laughs> and or you'd go you know you you could play tag. Kids love to play tag or tickle fights or pillow fights or if it's bad weather you can stay inside. You can dance. You can teach your kids your dances. They can teach you yours. You can, um, but it should be playful. It should be fun. It's not like go do five sit-ups or go on the tra treadmill in this front of the TV. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about getting outside and playing and being, and as a family, and, and trust me, everybody's happy when they do it. My daughter went to one of my lectures once and I was talking about playing tag and so <laughs> I was like, oh, and so, you know, she's she's like a little computer. She's got it all in there and so she basically was like, okay, mom, dinner's over. Let's go play tag like you said in your lecture. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, here we awesome. go. So we, we went outside and we played tag and we were laughing or giggling or the neighbors kind of got involved. It, it ended up being a great time and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, so, and even making lists like and during the summer right now, it's kind of, Parents are running out of ideas already on what to do, and so yeah. to sit down as a family and like, okay, like let's, let's make a list of all these different activities we could do, you mm -hmm. know, and um, and make it fun. And so that's that's what it's all about. It should be fun. It should be play, and and everyone should be involved. It's not like mom sitting on the couch and saying you need to go outside and exercise. That's that's mm -hmm. never gonna work. It's like smoking and saying you know you really shouldn't smoke. Those kids mm -hmm. um, they might nag the parents, but eventually they will smoke if that's what mom's doing. So. Well, and it sounds like both in exercise and, and, and what you eat, it just should be almost natural, like just yes. something that comes to you naturally. It's not forcing something on anybody or, or um, making it so they can't have something or shouldn't do something. It's just what is natural for them. Yes, and, and like I said, it's gotten hard in modern day society. Most of the aisles in the grocery store have crap in them, pardon my French. And so it's like that periphery of the grocery store is going to be where the healthier foods are, the ones where that need to be refrigerated. You know, all those sugary drinks and sports drinks and juices, which are, you know, fruit juices are so full of sugar and they're not filling. I'd much rather have them eat a gl uh, uh, orange and have a, gl a glass of water than drink a big glass of orange juice. And so, just kind of knowing that those 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 messages are out there and they're they're off, it's it's a good good thing to start with. And then, yeah, keeping it basic. And then we offer food three meals and two to three snacks a day. So every two to three hours, children should be offered food. Adults should be too. If you go too long without food, then your body goes, oh my God, we're in a famine. We're gonna food's not enough. And then yeah. you'll tend to binge and eat more, and you'll actually start, and you'll, the hormones in your body, uh, which John loves to talk about, the leptin resistance that happens and so forth, but you go too long without food, your body's going to want to store fat because it's going to feel like it's in a famine. And so you really want to offer that food throughout the day, feel good about it, don't starve yourself, that's never going to be a good way, it's going to slow your metabolism down, and, and you're not going to be healthy. 
I just, I, I love the word that you're using. You're using the word offer food. You're not saying mm -hmm. you have to have food multiple times a day. You're saying you offer it. And so it yes. kind of speaks, it speaks to that whole thing. It's like if your body wants it, then eat it. If your body doesn't want it, then don't eat it. Yes, make it available. Sit down with them. They have to come to the table. Whoever's there, you know, not every meal, everyone's going to be there, every snack. But sit down with them for a few minutes. And like my favorite time is when my daughter comes home from school and I'll make a pot of like chamomile tea and I have all these cute little teacups and, and I'll put out two or three food groups in front of her and we'll talk about her day. And it's like, it's my favorite time of the day. And mm -hmm. so just stop what you're doing. Really focus on that time. And, and yeah, let those kids self regulate. But typically, I I, um, you know, you want to make sure that the, their blood sugars don't go down. So they're being offered food um, throughout the day. Got it. Well, and along with childhood obesity, another uh, thing, uh, another disease, if you will, that has been um, really on the rise is ADHD. And um, before this interview, we had several other people in our office submit questions because just like everybody out there, we all have lots of questions about this for our kids. Is, is there something that you have discovered in all of the work that you've done with kids that um, food is attached to ADHD or ADD or anything like that? And is there anything that a parent could do to help? You know, I think it, uh, not offering the foods with a lot of chemicals, and I want that for everyone, not just if the kid has ADD. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think ADD has a, a bum rap. I, I totally have ADD. I've got my hands. I'm writing a book. I see patients. I do programs at our local museums. I mean, I play tennis. We, I got multiple interests. I'm going in different directions, and, and I'm happy that way. We were just talking because we run our fit. Uh, club program. We're having a summer camp here, and um, and the staff was saying, "Wow, this kid, he's really having trouble. He has really bad ADD." And so, and and I'm like, "Well, just have him do more laps, or have him get him more busy. Have him help help coach at some of the other things." Because back in the back in the day, if a kid had ADD or ADHD and he was on the farm, he just he just got more corn than everybody else did because he's yeah. moving. <laughs> So it's like, you know, but we're, but we're telling these kids, okay, now you need to sit all day at school and you need to sit here and then you need to sit at the table and you need to sit at the bank and be quiet. And, you, and all of a sudden, these kids are not being as active as they need to. And, and there's a reason why that ADHD has survived in, in our genetics is because it, it was beneficial. And so I think, I think if we can just get those kids more busy, um, it, it goes a long way. Yeah, again, I just I keep hearing this over and over again. It's like we keep labeling things. And you talk about labeling in your book, but we keep labeling things as something that's wrong. And then all of a sudden, that's just the only way anybody can see it. And so instead of having that label sit there on the kid, just letting the kid be who he is and be natural and, and yeah. you know, yeah, run extra laps, do extra things. Maybe they'll help you clean around the house. Who knows? That's the kid that you keep busy. You know, it's like when you have a little bit more of a hyper dog, that dog has to go out for a walk every day, and it's the same principle with your kid. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm always doing the veterinary components, but I'm <laughs> big with animals, so that's what you're going to get. No, that's great. Well, and just so everybody knows, a lot of the tips that Dr. Patricia is talking about and many, many more are actually available in her book, Fit Kids Revolution, which she co-wrote with John Gabriel. Um, and you can get this today as well as a couple of other things that are John Gabriel exclus exclusives, but will also support what Dr. Patricia is talking about. Um, Weight Loss for Kids, it's an audio CD, and it has two CDs, in, two CDs in it, as well as the Gabriel Method Cookbook, which has some great recipes in it, including like ricotta pancakes and... Um, what was another one? Oh, like chicken nuggets that have been made in uh, the most healthy yet delicious sounding way. It's really incredible. But you can get all three of those things for less than the price of the cookbook itself. It's actually going to be $49, and that is 50% off. And you can get that at www.beyondword.com forward slash fit kids. Be sure to get that real soon because I'm, and I am in the midst of reading Fit Kids Revolution, and there's so much in it, and I know it's written for kids. But simultaneously, I'm getting so much out of it for myself. So thank yes, you for, I have for to. yeah, thank you for writing it, and thank you for for crossing that for uh, putting something so simple and yet so profound in in my hands personally. 
Um, well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, I was going to say I did. I do lectures throughout the county and in my area, and I teach doctors, but social workers, and we at the or local orphanage. I did a lecture, and three staff members. I just got a call from them about a month ago that three staff members a year after my talk had lost each a hundred pounds. So it's like it does work for everybody, you know. And yeah. it's also kind of good when we talk about how to feed a kid. Well, then you go, well, how was I fed, you know? And so you can kind of you can kind of check yourself a little bit and go. Okay, you know, I don't need to finish my plate. That's okay. And just sometimes just those conscious decisions can make a big difference. Yeah, and I it's that's exactly where I went. As soon as I started reading this, it's like it yes, they're talking yeah, you're talking specifically about kids, but all everything that's in there can pertain to me too. I can go out and play tag. I would love to go play tag. <laughs> There's some something out there in our society that's telling me that even though I am a grown up, I well because I'm a grown up, I shouldn't go out and play tag. It's apparently not okay for adults to have. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I I'm I'm very excited to read the rest of this, and I can't wait to incorporate it into my life. Well, and one thing, and a, a, another question that immediately comes up for anybody who's starting something like this is, how do you start? Like I am where I am. What is the first step, or the first three or four steps that can get us on the way to to a healthier life? Well, I think, you know, taking stock that you're actually making a conscious effort to do that, I think you need to give yourself, you know, a pat on the back because I think that's just awareness is the big first step. And then um, I think the, if the, if the for the bravest souls that want to get healthy the quickest, you've got to get out your glasses and go through those labels of the food that's in your house because you really want to get it out. Um, if you if you want to chicken out and do it the slow way, just stop buying the bad stuff and then and just buy the good stuff and then eventually it'll be gone. But trust me, it's it goes so much quicker if we can just get that stuff out of there because those granola bars or whatever that junk is that's in your cupboard, that's what mm -hmm. you're going to eat first before those Brussels sprouts that you bring home. So mm -hmm. if you can get kind of a clean slate and go through and do some house cleaning and get some food away, um, throw it away. I know it's hard, but ultimately it's like, you know, you want to put the best food food in your body. When I meet with families, I always tell the children, I'm like, okay, if I were to give you a brand new car, what would you put in the engine? You know, and they say, oh, I'd put gas in, I'd put oil in, I'd put the coolant in, and air on the tires, and I would take really good care of it. And I was like, that's exactly it, right? So if we, if you have, and you, so you would take care of that car because no one else is going to give you another car. That's pretty cool that I'm giving going to give you a free car. And, and we start going into like, well, now, now, how many bodies do you think you're going to have? You know, and you know, well, oh, one. And I was like, so that your body has to last your whole life. Well, what what do you think needs to go into your car? And so those processed grains, those sugary drinks, those chemically laden foods, those don't make your car work. It's like putting salt water in the gas tank. It's like it just your engine isn't going to run right. And so if we can get those foods out and then try to, you know, add fruits and vegetables to all your meals and snacks. Um, start drinking water and um, white milk or if you don't do uh, dairy at least uh, if you do the almond or the soy or whatever the soy should be whole bean the almond or the coconut or the flaxseed whatever kind of milk you're having it should be unsweetened which is extremely hard to find um, with, you know to get a pure form of it mm -hmm. um, but that would be that would be the first step and that would go a long way so my my first thought as you're talking about this flashes to my freezer where okay. I have a package of Stouffer's macaroni and cheese which is potentially like my favorite food in the whole world. Um, <laughs> I love macaroni and cheese, it's my favorite like overall, I don't know, food group. <laughs> I almost think of it that way. But what do, how, how do you deal with that? Like there's this one thing that I love and there is not a healthy version of macaroni and cheese that no, I, I, I don't yet. agree. I, oh, we'll really? see. I, it Whoa. depends on your version of healthy. We have we have mac and cheese as a um, rotation at our house. Do we have it every day? No, but I mean, especially this summer so far, my daughter's so busy with junior guards, and I need something quick to. Cook. I'll just do a 100% whole grain uh, macaroni. And I'll either melt my own cheese or at least get like an organic version of it, like Annie's or Trader Joe's or one of those. And and then, so I'll make that mac and cheese. So I've got a whole grain 
and I've got the cheese, which is a dairy, which is going to give some calcium. And then I think, and then I want to add, I want four food groups for that meal. So then I'm going to add a fruit and a vegetable. So I'll make it with, um, my daughter loves roasted cauliflower, or I'll just cut up cucumbers or ca carrots or make a salad with it. And then I'll, and some fresh fruit. The peaches are, right now are so good in California. They're like, <laughs> we can't have enough white peaches right now. So, or cherries, they're so good right now. So add that fruit and the vegetable by 100% whole grain. Because I, we've been talking about grains a little bit, but not specifically. A grain has three parts, and the two of the parts, the dark parts, actually have 90% of the nutrition, the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, the phytochemicals that fight cancer, all the good things in grains are in those two parts, the germ and the, and the bran. Those are cleaved off when we processed our grains and make white rice or white flour or... Um, uh, white bread or whatever we're going to do, white pasta, but you can buy versions of it and there's more and more out there and especially with this gluten free thing, there's uh, there's more grains coming out that are whole grain versions, but don't be fooled just because it says gluten free doesn't mean it's it's healthy. As long yeah. as it says it's 100% whole grain and there's no sugar added to it, then that's a reasonable grain from my perspective because I'm, I'm all about just basics. So like I said, I don't deny anybody anything. We just find a little bit healthier ways of making it. And like I said, that fruit and vegetable is key to that. So. I'm just thrilled to pieces. You just told me that I can have macaroni and cheese. But get rid of that stuff first because that's a processed one with a lot of crap in it. So get like an organic yeah. whole grain version. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, they, they do those lists all the time of the worst thing in the grocery store to buy. And I think Stouffer's is usually either Stouffer's mac and cheese is usually either number one or number two. And I think a lot of people out there have those kinds of things in the freezer, like they're sitting there because in case they need a quick meal or they're just craving something. And I think um, the freezer might be kind of an important place for me to start. <laughs> Not most of us do. That's where a lot of the junk food is hi hiding out. And and I use my freezer for my fruits um, when or even my vegetables when they're starting to get bad. Mm. And so then I'll um, I'll I'll cut them up and then I'll use them later for shakes or like with my vegetables if they start getting suspect. It seems like all my tomatoes come together at the same time, so then I have too many. So I'll freeze them and I'll make a spaghetti sauce or whatever later on, or I'll cut up an onion. I can't use it all, but it's going to go bad, so I'll freeze that and use it later on. Um, it's not perfect, you know. Most people want to have everything fresh all the time, but I'm kind of practical and frugal, and I want to kind of utilize what I have. So absolutely, well, and. So many families out there are. I mean, one of the reasons that I know that um, some families don't buy fresh vegetables is, or fresh fresh fruit or vegetables is because they go bad before they can eat them, and they feel like they're just throwing food, they're throwing money away. Yeah. So, well, and I think they forget to serve them too. My our yeah. thing in the book about vegetables is BSE: buy them, serve them, and eat them yourself. And um, and so it's like, well, I buy the vegetables, nobody said, well, did you serve them? <laughs> you know, that's a key thing, you know, it's got to be out there. you got to serve it. So, and you've got to serve, vegetables are a bitter food. Sometimes you have to um, offer it to child uh, 15 times up to 28 times before you know if that child will even eat it. Now, most of us serve, you know, I'll serve like green beans or whatever, Brussels sprouts. Two or three times a kid doesn't eat it. We go, oh, he hates his Brussels sprouts, and we never serve it again. And that's just not the way it works. There's one study, and they had this cute little kid about six, nine months in a in a high chair, and every day they're spooning in green beans. He's like, oh, we need it. You know, day one, it's on his cheek, and it's it's all over. And day two, day three, and like day 28, same kid, same mom, same spoon. He put the green beans in front of me. He eats it, and he opens his mouth, and he wants more. And so it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, Houston, we've landed. And so so you kind of keep serving it, keep offering it, not make comments about it. My daughter, I offered her salad between the time she was a year and four almost every day because I always have salad with dinner because I'm always trying to serve as many vegetables as I can. And I like salads. And so we, I, she maybe tried three months into the salads one time. Mm -hmm. And did not eat it. I mean, so she was way past that rule of 28. Sure enough, we're in the grocery store. She's four years old, and we're she's all into leprechauns and 
where it's right around the time of uh, St. Patrick's Day, and some lady comes up to her and she's like, oh, little girl, would you like to have some ranch dressing? And kids really like it. And I'm like, oh, she's coaxing my kid, you know, but I just let it go. And my daughter looks at her and she's just like, you know, I don't like dressing, but that's my favorite kind of salad. Can I have the salad? And she actually took it and she was eating it like candy in the store. And that was butter lettuce, which was the lettuce that I was buying regularly. That was on her plate every day that she didn't eat. And who knew, like the salad dressing, which is like the least healthy part of the meal, yeah. was the thing that was keeping her from it. You know. And so then I'm like quick on my feet. I was trying to like, you know, the hamster's always moving when you're a parent. And so I was like, would you like to make a rainbow salad for dinner tonight? And so, and she's like, how do you do that? You know, and I said, well, we'll go through the produce and we'll pick different colors from the rainbow that you can put on your salad. So we had orange for carrots and we had yellow for corn and we put blueberries on because that was the only thing blue. And we had purple cabbage and she picked it out and we still, she's nine now and we still make rainbow salads to this day, but no dressing. And who cares? <laughs> that was great. That's awesome. Well, and it's, and that. That study is absolutely remarkable because so many parents give up so quickly and 27 seems like an insane number, but I guess if you're really committed to your kid's nutrition and you just, you know, you go for the 27 times or the 28 times or the 15 times, however long it takes, then, then they'll like peas for the rest of their life or at least yeah. eat them. And you know what? And they may be avoiding a food because for some reason. Like I had a, a child that... You know, when I was going through his diet history, his mom, his his grandmother, you know, I went through and he said, oh, I, I eat eggs every morning. And I said, oh, really? And he's like, I hate them. Grandma makes me eat them. And I, and here he had this horrible eczema, he had this red circles around his eyes. And I was like, Grandma, 10 bucks, he's allergic to that, those eggs that you're making him eat every day. He got stomach aches, he, they wouldn't work with him. And sure enough, we did the testing and he was allergic to eggs. And she hasn't paid me up, so I'm upset about that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, but the key is, it's like, they, there may be real reasons why people are avoiding certain foods. So yeah. there's no benefit to pushing them to eat one. My mm. social worker that used to work for me, she found out when she was 40, she was allergic to seafood, and her doctor's like, so does that change anything for you? She's like, no, I hate seafood. So there may be natural things at play, so you never force mm -hmm. it, but you, but you always offer it, and you continue to rotate things through. And for me, I try to get that variety by using the seasons. You know, so during fall, we got the pumpkins, we got the apples and, and so forth. Uh, right now, we've got the great peaches, we've got the tomatoes, we've got the corn. And so you just kind of stick with what's in season, and all of a sudden, you're having this nice variety that's, that you're exposing your family to. Absolutely. Well, and you got all the farmer's markets out there right now where you can just go, and it's, it's a smorgasbord of, of different vegetables and fruits, and everything is all beautifully grown. And one of the things that... Um, at least in, in my mind seems to be, uh, I, I'm not sure whether to buy into it or not, is organic. Um, what do you, uh, and it's actually of your question that we just received as well, it's like how do you feel about organic food? <laughs> I, I generally, I like the concept of organic, the fact that there's less chemicals involved uh, spraying on, on the food and so forth, so, but I'm not like crazy about it. So for example, if, if if it's a berry, it's like close to the ground, it's thin skinned, I'm going to eat the whole fruit, of course, I'm going to buy that organic, hands down, if it's on sale especially, <laughs> right? Because yes. organic can be more expensive. Um, and that's why I do like to grow things in my garden because it's just, mm. it's, it is cheaper and it's fun and it's engaging for my daughter. But if I, um, if I, you know, I'm looking at the bananas, I, I'm like, that's a big fat skin, I'm not as going to be as much of a, you know, a purist on that, I might just buy the regular bananas. So I'll tend to try to choose, you know, what organic is on sale, what I can afford, and so forth. But I, I don't, I don't sweat it with some of the bigger skinned foods that, you know, that are going to be peeled, and we're not going to eat that component of it anyway. So that's kind of where where I sit with it. I just, like I said, I'm a very basic person. I don't go, I'm not crazy on either side of it. But um, for my, that's where I feel good. That's my lane. And that's what I usually recommend with my families. That's that. It seems again so simple. Um, and we do have another viewer question that I'm actually um, really interested in because I could see myself doing this personally. Um, when we were talking earlier about the clean out, when you clean out everything or out of your house, or as you said, you know, just slowly let it. Um, run out. <laughs> um, yeah. She says that she gets endless complaining, endless griping, 
um, people who refuse to eat, all of this stuff. What do you do in the face of that? Um, and how do you make sure that you know your kids aren't starting to hoard the food once they realize what you're doing and they just kind of hide it in back or something, anything like that? Um, well, how do you how do you deal with that? You know, I think uh, I think people are more scared that that's gonna happen than it that it actually does. If you get the kids involved, you know, and uh, the way we we try to run my meals, we do three, four, four. So we do three food groups for breakfast, four for lunch, and four for dinner. And it always has a fruit and vegetable. And and the big thing we're gonna start doing is trying to add fruits and vegetables to all the meals and snacks. So. Bring the kids with you to the grocery store. You know, it's okay, maybe the peaches are on sale, or maybe they're even sampling them, or, or wherever. Right. You know, go pick out what's what. You know, let them. Okay, you're in charge of picking some fruits for breakfast. You're in charge of picking some fruits for lunch. You're in charge of picking some fruits for dinner. And I will do the same thing with ve with vegetables. And just get them kind of engaged and involved. And just stay on the outer border of the grocery store. Don't go up and down those. Um, those aisles because there's really very little that you need. You know, I'll go get my grapeseed oil, I'll go get my olive oil, I'll, you know, maybe pick up, you know, some, I don't know, maybe some frozen corn, you know. But for the most part, I really try to, you know, keep in that refrigerated area. And it's like a game with my daughter and I. It's so fun. And then we go to the butcher area and I'll be like, hey, let's pick some proteins for this week for dinner. And the other night she picked out clams. I, 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 would not have pictured that, and so I haven't made clams in a while. So I got it, <laughs> and so I've got some whole grain pasta because I think my my favorite food in the whole entire world is linguine and clams. I've got an Italian mm. grandmother that used to make that for Christmas Eve for the family, and it's still a tradition. And so I got some, we got some uh, whole grain linguine, and she helped me make the clams, and then we we served it with a fruit and a vegetable, real easy. I think I just sliced cucumbers and got a thing of blueberries, real basic. I don't like a lot of dirty dishes. And um, and she, you know, she was eating those clams hand over fist. But had I just walked in the door and like, oh, we're having clams tonight. But I don't know how that would have gone over. You know, yeah. I mean, I obviously know how to handle it. But I think when it comes from them, if they if they get involved, it can be really fun. And and also, and parents just need to know that they're in charge of what is being served. They're in charge of what is in their house. The kids don't have jobs, money, whatever. And if they do, if they're old enough to have jobs and money, they they can either start paying rent. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, they can, I mean, they really need to respect the fact that these are the rules of the house, not to bring those foods in, and that they are lucky to still be living at home. And so, especially if there's younger siblings, and mm -hmm. we're trying to make a change for the family, you know. And so, I don't know. So that, that usually really helps, you know, make it all work out. Well, and one thing that we were talking about before we went on air was uh, the fact that you can control what you have in the house, but then what happens when your kids go to a friend's house for a sleepover? What happens when your kids go to a friend's house just to hang out and they have all those processed, um, really saturated, fat-rich foods? You just let it go. It's like the, the song from Frozen. <laughs> just let it go. You know. I want to hear that a lot. I'm a pediatrician. The kids are singing that left and right. But yeah, yeah, you just want to, you don't want to go to that, you know, your kids sitting at the table at the wedding and they're at the kids' table and you're like, honey, you can't have that. You know, you were not eating that kind of food. You let it go. You don't make it a big deal. You don't make any food a forbidden food. You choose to not to not buy certain foods and fill the house with healthy foods. But when birthdays, I have had kids that have lost 100 pounds in nine months and they had cake on their birthdays. They had, they went trick or treating. They, you know, we, you don't want to go crazy. This is not, it's not restriction. And once they feel restricted, it's like that little boy with the ration with the, with his cup. I'll tell you, I had, yeah, it was horrible. And we have so many kids are getting so pressured to eat healthy, and yet there's still junk food at home. And the mom will be yeah. like, "Well, I don't want to get rid of my Nutella. He just needs to eat less." And it's like, "No, you can't control portions on that kind of food. Yeah. That's hard, okay? But if you're eating, what are you going to eat? Like four apples? Like you? Then all of a sudden you feel full. You get the fiber. Those are food, natural foods that are not designed to, you know, get." get you to eat more and so mm -hmm. forth you know uh, cheese puffs are an awesome example they melt in your mouth so you're you eat this cheese puff and you're like oh my gosh this has got so much flavor your brain's all <laughs> yeah. your stomach's like this is coming down it's like oh I didn't feel anything there's nothing there because it melted in your mouth like have some more and next thing you know you can eat a whole bag of Cheetos and so but awesome. if we don't have Cheetos at home 
you know. And a lot of my kids love hot Cheetos. That's a big thing. So we we recommend putting like uh, tahini powder or chili powder on uh, on mangoes, on jicama, on uh, green apples, and they can get that hot flavor. They can get that heat, but it's with a fruit and a vegetable. Huh. That's fascinating. <laughs> I, it's, it is it is one of those those things again, kind of like the Stouffer's mac and cheese. It's like sometimes you just want chips, sometimes you just want Cheetos, and I, you're it just you're pointing to the to exactly what I think is the the issue is that all of those manufacturers out there in the world, their job is to get you to want more. They want you to yes. They want they they're not concerned about your health. They're no. just and they're and it's interesting. Like even the word multigrain is really just processed grain with brown food coloring in is what we've been figuring no. as we go through the labels. Yeah. So they're trying to really trick you, and that's why you have to make sure it says 100% whole grain, and you have to look and make sure it's not sweetened. Um, and and then it's a safe thing to bring into your house. And then like I said, you're out. Let it go. Don't say a word. <laughs> just let it go. Okay, got it. Well, I just want to let everybody know again that they can get Fit Kids Revolution, Dr. Patricia's wonderful book, and then also um, audio CD with two CDs in it from John Gabriel about weight loss for kids, as well as the Gabriel Method cookbook with some really great recipes in it, beautiful pictures. It's a great cookbook. So you can get all of that for less than the price of the cookbook. Again, it's $49, which is 50% off of all of this at www.beyondword.com forward slash fit kids. And then also if you have a question for Dr. Patricia, please be sure to use the Google Hangouts app and also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we do have another viewer question. And so how do you get older kids motivated to get involved or to be okay with a sudden food change? It's kind of along the same lines as the last question. But how do you how do you do that? How do you 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 mentioned getting them um, giving them a role in going out and, and getting their fruits and vegetables for each of the meals, but what if they just don't want to do that? Well, yeah, I mean, your teenagers, to be frank, they're just lucky they're getting someone to make food for them, and that won't last when they're in college, right? And so, <laughs> you know, I mean, just you, we, what we really want to do is just, um, you know, so take what your basic things are that you know your family loves and start adding fruits and vegetables to them and try, start using whole grain varieties of them. Start putting brown rice out or even mix in the beginning. If you're used to white rice, maybe mix half brown and half white, and then eventually, the you know, as the white rice, you know, you run out of it, then then all of a sudden it's all brown. And then it is funny after a few months, then you go back to white rice and you're like, oh, it tastes like water. But you have to mm. kind of, a, you know, get these tastes down. The pastas, the whole grain pastas taste the same to me. They don't make a darn difference. 100% whole wheat bread, you know, that's, if you want a sandwich, that's the only thing that we're making it out of. And um, it doesn't, it, I, I you just feel like we have this little trend right now as we're talking that it's like, it's like, bad if it's healthy, but it, it's not. Mm. Kids, when I go through the, the, the list on what to put for the shopping, I'll go, okay, what fruits do you what do you like? And the kid starts naming things, and what vegetables? And the mom's like, oh, he hates vegetables. I'm like, shh, be quiet. You know, like, okay, let's pick one. We'll put that down. Let's, you know, let's jicama. We got cucumber. We got carrots. You know, we start building on those things. And then, um, but it doesn't have to be dry, and, you know, you don't have to have a kale shake to make me happy. It's just, you know, just start adding fruits and vegetables. Even if you, like, order a pizza, get a thin crust, get it on whole wheat if you can. You can put mm -hmm. chicken or vegetables on it and then serve it with a salad and some fresh fruit. Cut up a watermelon and put a salad out there. And so you can take these foods and really start shifting your family and making making um, foods, you know, meals more healthy and still and make them enjoyable. Awesome. Well, and one question that I have is, so given that I was raised the way I was raised, um, where food was, um, it's, it's used as a reward, it's used as, uh, it's seen as something that I need to restrict, you know, all those fun things. Um, my parents definitely still have that view. And then also there's somebody who actually submitted a question from the office who, as a grandparent, how do we reach out to people, like my parents, they're, they're grown-ups. I can't tell them how to do their food. And, and in the case of the person at my work, she can't tell the parent how to feed their grandchildren. So how do we make a difference for those people? 
I think, you know, that's why I like the fact that we've written the books. You can get them mm -hmm. the book. You could, you know, have them listen to this interview. Get them on the right track. I think that's, I mean, people, I get parents all the time and they're like, Grandma, she's the one that cooks and she will never do this. And Grandma comes in, she's like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I'll do that better for all of us. You know, help Grandpa's blood pressure. I mean, it's very interesting. I think we just get so concerned. But the bottom line is, these, I'm not asking you to go on, take crazy medications and buy expensive foods or do anything wacky. And, um, and yeah, parents are going to make certain comments. I was labeled, you know, Patricia hates her tomatoes. She hates her tomatoes. She hates her tomatoes. That was my whole thing. And I had to move to Boston from California and be in med school and go, you know, I really should be eating tomatoes because there's so much good nutrition and as I'm in medical school. And and at that point, I'd cut them up really small, and I'd mix them in with my food or put lots of Parmesan cheese with it and put it on my pasta, and I was st slowly crept into eating tomatoes. Now I'm growing them in my backyard and all these things, but I still go to my mom's house, and they just don't taste right because of <laughs> that long-term labeling. So, um, but, you know, you know, but we all can learn. My mom is so funny because she's like, I've heard you. I know you've said these little comments as, as we, you know, she's helped me with my daughter and so forth. And she's like, but now reading your book, it's all actually all coming together, which is <laughs> awesome. So it's just, you know, just be patient. Just be, you know, you can only control yourself. Um, but, um, but sharing this information with people, I think, is, is very valuable. And, and it's just not a hard sell. This is this is basically what people they want to hear. This they want to know that there's basic things that you can do. And I mean, to just to, so you have an idea, our our data from last year from our patients that we saw, and we see the toughest cases in the county. We have an 84.5 percent success rate Amazing. in treating childhood obesity, and we get kids. 90 percent of my patients are living below the poverty line. Now mm -hmm. we're starting to increase that percentage on other people because they they're like, wow, I you know the insurance companies like we don't have anything like this, and are starting to um, send patients over as well but the bottom line is these are basic things that anybody can do and most people want to do if they if they knew there's just bad information out there it's hard to know where to start well and how so my my personal story is that and I told you a little bit about this the other day is the fact that I you know had my childhood where food was I had a very weird relationship with food and then I thought I got a better relationship with food where I was exercising and eating a certain number of calories every day. There you go with the portion control and all sorts of restrictions. Um, and I lost somewhere around 97 pounds. And when I lost all that weight and got to that low level, I was like, yes, I've made it. This is going to be so easy. And lo and behold, not, I guess it's been probably about a year and a half now, I've gained most of it back. And it's just, it's frustrating and it's angering and it's also just I think the thing that I'm most worried about is that I disappointed people because everybody's like oh well you just you have a whole new lifestyle now but I didn't obviously you know I, I think that I think you need to give credit for what you've done you've done an amazing job you're trying to find the right way you were still misguided you were trying to find diets you were trying to do calories I never look at calories on food. I think if you just can put that food out there and just enjoy your food and and just let your body, you know, feel when you're full and and just start finding some exercise you can do that makes you happy, not multiple repetitions at the gym. Now, I personally I like multiple rep rep uh, repetitions at the gym. I've got like a group of people we've been working out together for a decade now and it's just an awesome group of people and we and we we follow Tommy Knox to the end of the world and he's awesome and we've got Olympic athletes that work out with us and it's awesome but most people aren't into that but find what get your passion about what you love and 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 just do it for yourself not for mm -hmm. how you're gonna fit in your jeans just do it to keep your stress down and so forth mm -hmm. it'll go a long way what is what is your perspective on on BMI I've heard things that body mass index I've heard that it's a good measure I've heard that it's not such a good measure um, and I know that like prescribing a certain weight loss goal to a person you know could actually be unhealthy if that's not how much they're supposed to lose but how do you measure if you're healthy or not well I think um, I think BMI is is a basic toolkit that you can use as an adult to just to get an idea but you take it with a grain of salt my one of my fitness structure uh, instructors 
he's so muscular that he's actually his BMI says he's like overweight or obese, but he's the fittest person I know. But so it's like it's it's a screening test. It's not foolproof. It's not a hundred percent. What we use for children though is different, and that's we use the BMI percentile for age. And nobody's talking about that because there's so few of us that are actually treating this and get it. <laughs> we're just like, we're, that's why I'm trying to disseminate this information. But Absolutely. we, the BMI changes because the BMI is a calculation of your height and your weight. And so if you look at the, the you know, the natural uh, development that children go through, the ratio of height to weight it fluctuates with time, and so I, I mean, I was I was on Hugh Hewitt's show last week, and we were talking about like how you could have a two-year-old that's that's BMI is coming down, but it's supposed to come down. So you could be a total fraud and be saying, "Oh, we help decrease BMIs on two-year-olds," and you're not doing anything, you know. Oh. Where also the BMI, as you start really getting taller and gaining body mass is between six and eighteen, your BMI is going to naturally be going up. So it could be going up but you could be getting slimmer it could be coming back towards mm -hmm. where it needs to be mm -hmm. and so for children it's a little bit more co uh, complicated um, but for children or adults you can always meet with your doctor and just see where you stand on the on with your BMI you can even look it on the computer that's yeah. that's one thing and um, from my perspective you don't even if you can just adopt these principles you'll end up in a healthy way and you don't have to get on the scale and you know it there's no weight that's perfect for, mm -hmm. you know for you it's just it's just it's just a way of living and the you know i even tell people just take the scale out of the house let me monitor the weight because i can monitor how things are going but don't focus on the scale that's that it fluctuates it's mm -hmm. it's all over the place just focus on being healthy keeping your stress down getting a good night's sleep ha filling your house with nutritious foods Adoring the people in your family mm -hmm. and and keeping your stress down. That's that that goes so far. And 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 John and I fully believe in both of those all of those principles. It's so interesting because you throw a couple of things in there that I don't think anybody really thinks about when they think about being healthy or uh, yeah being being healthy and it's like getting enough sleep and adoring the people in your life. I mean that is I think that's that's one even less than sleep and I think it's so important. Because you have you're surrounded by these wonderful people, and I personally, as I was going through my whole weight loss journey, there were a lot of times when I just got very insular and where I was just trying to do it myself. I think that probably was um, not the healthiest thing to do either. No, I know. I mean, it's and it it makes it so much more fun too when you include people. I have um, mm -hmm. my daughter and I we she loves to do her Just Dance 4 video game and so we call my mom and my mom comes down and the three of us are you know doing our little dances to One Direction or whatever awesome. Just Dance 4, and it's so much fun and it's those are times that we will always remember you know and so um, just it's 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 healthy it's bonding and it's what it's what it's all about well I, I need to tell you Corinne says hi oh. um, <laughs> Is that Corinne that was listening on the Gabriel Method? I, I don't know, but it's I, I just got a, a viewer texted that um, Corinne says hi. So oh, you know. Sorry. And then one other thing that we were talking about before we got on air um, is that many of us, uh, like we either live in apartments or we live in rental houses or we live in places where it's not really possible for us to grow our own vegetables. And I know that that is a great way to get organic and cheap vegetables and fruits. And you had some great suggestions on how to to still have that no matter where you are. Yeah, I have. I um, one good thing to start with when you don't have a lot of space is um, is your herbs because you can pick those up very easily. Put them in a pot right in front of your house. I always have mint. In fact, uh, my daughter and I like to take jicama and mint and blackberries, and we make like a little salad out of it. It's random, oh. but the flavors are really good together. Uh, we we invented that. Um, but mint and basil, and um, you can do salads and tomatoes and corn and so forth. I just do them in whiskey or wine barrels, and so I have a, a like three or four, and then I'll rotate through. You know, right now we've got blueberries and tomatoes and corn and. Um, what else do I have? Uh, those uh, pole beans uh, mm -hmm. and so forth. And then um, I don't have enough room for like a pumpkin to be, you know, 
uh, you know, cascading across my lawn and so <laughs> forth. But um, I, now I understand. We were talking before the show that you can some of the smaller ones you can grow vertically. I, I, I wouldn't be able to explain that, but. Um, but you know, so there's you could talk with your local growers and find out what you can do. But uh, starting with pots, and then you can in the winter months you can try to do uh, like um, broccoli and some other things. One plant that I'm so loving that I have in a, in my whiskey barrel right now is um, artichokes. They're so they're mm. just beautiful plants, anyways. And who doesn't like an artichoke? I mean, talk about a great substitute for chips. I love taking artichokes and dipping them in. There's a cilantro, jalapeno cilantro hummus that I love, and we just dip it in there. My daughter doesn't want to dip it in anything; she just has it plain. Um, oh. But um, but they're a great substitute for um, for chips. I never thought about that. I love artichokes, and I actually did have an artichoke plant once. So I will. Uh, Go get some whiskey barrels and some. They're so pretty. Some <laughs> yeah, it's fun. That's fantastic. Well, um, I just want to let everybody know once again we're coming to close to, to the end of the hour that you can get Fit Kids Revolution, as well as the uh, two disc audio CD Weight Loss for Kids, as well as there's so many things, um, the Gabriel Method Cookbook. All for less than the price of the cookbook, so it's forty-nine dollars, fifty percent off, and you can go to www.beyondword.com forward slash fit kids in order to get that package. And I have to say, I've I am so excited to read through the rest of, of your book and just to find out about the simple things that I can do to make life healthier and easier because dieting, no matter what diet you're on, it just seems like a burden. It seems like something that you have to do and it's just annoying. No, the, uh, what I'm talking about is how to live your life, and it's not a diet because a diet is like you know you're going to do it from A to B, and this is how you know you want to live your life, and so you know it's just it's just just get back to basics with it. And um, Whitney, you call me anytime. Thank <laughs> I'll you support so much. you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Well, and just before we end, I'm just curious if there's one thing that you could tell parents about how to relate how to relate to their kids around food. What would that be? Um, boy, that's a good question. Um, I would just say, I would just say, love your family at the table. Really okay. fill their buckets. My daughter in preschool, they talk about filling buckets with love and make them feel loved at the table. Really describe things that you love about them, and they'll flourish and they'll want to eat meals with you. And families that eat together, the children are tend to be the family tends to be leaner. The children are less likely to be getting involved with drinking drugs, early sexual encounters. It's more protective than church groups or tutors. Um, it's very protective for families to enjoy meals together. But mm -hmm. if it's a war and it's a big, you know, we're, 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 you know, I say bring your heart and not your sword in the book. And it's like if it's a war, you're picking fights with your husband or, you know, don't do this, I'm all, you know, it's a big battlefield or eat more of that then when they get older, they're going to eat at the mall or they're going to eat at Jimmy's house. And trust me, you want Jimmy over at your house. You want him to have a nose ring. Does he have his hair purple? What's going on with Jimmy? <laughs> you know, we want to see this Jimmy guy. Is Jimmy a guy or a girl? You never, you don't know. So it's really important to um, to be that house where kids want to be. And, um, and and I love that. that I've got that right now with my house, and, and that's that's my lane, and, and that's, that's the whole point of being a parent from my perspective. Mm. Got it. Thank you so much, Dr. Patricia. That was that's fantastic. I will remember that, even in my family that doesn't have children yet. It's it's a great place to start. And I just want to let everybody know. Um, so next week um, we're going to have Scott Lind. He's the founder of Sun Potion, and he's going to be talking about a lot of different herbs and things that you can add to your food to to have it be healthier as well. So it's kind of along the same lines as Dr. Patricia, but a different angle. And he's going to be talking specifically about some of those herbs, some, most of which I've never heard of before. So be sure to come back next week and we'll get another perspective on nutrition. It'll be really interesting. And Dr. Patricia, thank you so, so much again for being on the show. This has just been a wonderful hour and I really appreciate all of your insights and your passion for this as well. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. This is great, and I love Beyond Words. Thanks for publishing my first book. It's very exciting for me. Congratulations, and everybody, you just got you got to go pick this up. It's so simple. It's so easy, and yes, it does say fit kids, but I feel like it's, it should say fit people. Revolution. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing. So thank you again, and we will see you next week. Okay.